What's going on guys? Jeff here from Mad Hatter's Reef and today we're going to take a look at the top 10 ways you can waste money with your reef tank. What is going on guys? Jeff here. If you're new to the channel, this is where I talk about everything reef tank related. So if you love reef tanks like I do, make sure you smash that subscribe button. And while you're smashing that, you might as well keep smashing and hit that bell so you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. Now today we're going to take a look at the top 10 ways you can waste money with your reef tank. So let's jump into it. Coming in at number 10 on our top 10 ways you can waste money with your reef tank, and that is running your lights for too long and too high. Now, this can hit you a couple different ways because running your lights too high for too long, it actually can add to your power bill, obviously, but it can also have a negative impact on your corals. You can overexpose your corals to light. And a lot of folks, they use that 12 hour mark as a go get, but depending on how powerful your lights are and how long you have them ramped up, it actually can have a negative impact on your corals and can stunt growth or even worse, kill them. Now with my AI primes that I have on the water box, I've actually taken the David Saxby approach where I have my lights ramp up and down throughout the photo period over the course of a day, which the AI primes have a tremendous amount of controllability and allow you to set that schedule to be able to do that. Not all lights have this ability, but I do believe that this has helped save on my power bill and not only that, help my corals not be exposed to powerful light for long periods of time. Coming in at number nine on our top 10 ways you can waste money with your reef tank is overfeeding your tank. Now it's incredibly important to feed your fish and corals a varied diet, everything from pellets to frozen foods, live foods, liquid foods. There's a ton of different types of foods out there, but there is a point where too much is just plain too much. Now, obviously there's a cost associated with the food. And if you're overfeeding your tank, that cost is going to increase. That can be a waste of money, but there's also the impact to water quality from overfeeding your tank. And this can lead you to chasing better water quality, where you're probably going to start looking at doing more water changes, potentially buying more equipment, or even more expensive filter media, which is going to dramatically increase the cost to maintain your system. And all of it can be prevented by feeding your fish and corals adequately. Coming in at number eight on our top 10 ways you can waste money with your reef tank is buying on impulse. Now, the best example of buying on impulse is going to a convention or trade show. And I am completely sure that there are folks out there that have a plan when they go to these trade shows and they have that specific thing that they're looking for and a price point. And when they find it, they have their aha moment and they get that new item. But I'd be willing to bet that most folks that are going to these conventions, trade shows, and other events are just completely browsing. And if they find a deal on something that is great, they pick it up, they bring it home, and then they start researching what the requirements are for that new fish or coral. And that is a recipe for disaster. Because if you don't understand what the requirements are of that new fish, coral, or invertebrate when you purchase it, there is a very strong chance that that animal is not going to make it. And that is not what this hobby is all about. Coming in at number seven on our top 10 ways you can waste money with your reef tank is a spinoff from number six, and that is not educating yourself about the livestock that you are keeping. In the last 10 years of this hobby, we have made huge advancements in the equipment that we have to help maintain this livestock that we keep in our tanks, and that has been a really good step in the right direction. I think the biggest step in the right direction is our ability to share information and help educate one another about the requirements of those corals, fish, and invertebrates. And I truly believe that that has been the secret sauce to a lot of the success that has been with the advancements in saltwater aquariums. Educating yourself on the livestock in which you want to keep, which you plan on keeping, is king when it comes to being successful with your reef tank. 
Coming in at number six on our top 10 ways you can waste money with your reef tank is overreacting to issues. Now, nothing good happens fast in a reef tank. Overreacting or correcting an issue with your reef tank too quickly will actually make the situation worse. To maintain a successful reef tank, you must make slow and small adjustments. Coming in at number five on our top 10 ways you can waste money with your reef tank is not balancing your parameters of your water and your new water before a water change. Just for a quick second, let's see how many of you out there that actually do this. Do you test your alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium of your aquarium water and your newly mixed salt water before doing a water change. If you do, congratulations, because most people probably don't. And the importance of this is if you do water changes and you pull water out of your tank, and if you dose alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium at any capacity, you are actually reducing those levels and creating instability in your tank. Not to mention that it is, in fact, a waste of money. Coming in at number four on our top 10 ways you can waste money with your reef tank is having a bad case of the LARS. Now, if you don't know what LARS are, I'm going to be putting a link in the description down below. And basically, in short, is it's being lazy about keeping a reef. And LARS can manifest itself in a number of different ways when it comes to reef keeping. It can be not removing salt creep from equipment and hoses. It can also be not cleaning the collection cup of your protein skimmer, not testing your water parameters, not doing water changes. All these things are basically being lazy about keeping a reef. And this can become serious big problems. If you are not doing maintenance on your reef tank you can lose fish you can lose corals or worse your system could completely crash and if you stop and think about how much money you have invested in this you might think a little bit differently coming in at number three on our top 10 ways you can waste money with your reef tank is not buying solid equipment now this is something that i fell into when i first got into the hobby and what i was essentially trying to do was save as much money on equipment and then spend money in livestock. Now, this is something that I joke about from time to time. And essentially what I'm saying is, hey, if you save money on equipment and other things, you can actually spend more money on coral and fish. And that's really not a good mindset to have, especially when it comes to reef tanks. What you should be striving for is buying the best equipment that you can afford and then over time collect your corals because i guarantee you if you buy cheaper turn pumps cheap heaters cheap power heads and then fill your tank with exquisite fish and very expensive corals it's just a matter of time before you are very disappointed coming in at number two in our top 10 list of ways to waste your money with your reef tank and that is not using a stock list and or wish list now, this is something that I did a video on a year or two ago, and the idea behind it is that you create a list, let's say fish. Fish is a good place to start with this. And you create a list of fish that you want to keep. And based on its requirements and care level, you basically design your system to support that livestock. And once you figure out what kind of system and what size it needs to be, you then move into your stocking plan, which is going to be the most peaceful fish to the most aggressive fish and then quarantine them and add them to your display tank and eventually you have your tank filled with all the fish that you want in the system that they need to grow and thrive in it's actually a video that i put a lot of work into and i'll be sure to add it to the description of this video so if you guys want to check that out it's a pretty helpful video for people that are looking to stock a tank and help reduce the amount of aggression which if you just are throwing fish in the tank and letting it happen, uh, there's a good possibility that those fish are going to end up dead, which is completely avoidable. And I'll be sure to uh, add that in there for you guys if you want to check that out. And coming in at number one on our top 10 ways you can set your money on fire with reef tanks. And that is not dipping your corals. Dipping your corals is a essential part of maintaining a successful reef tank. If you don't dip your corals, you are basically playing Russian roulette with every single coral that you add to your tank. And not only are you 
at risk of adding the infected coral to your tank and that dying, it runs the risk of infecting every single other coral that you have bought previously. At one point in time, if you would ask me if there was a vendor out there that I trust enough to the point where I would just take their corals and add it to my display tank, I had a couple, but that time has come and gone. Ultimately, if you are adding corals to your tank, you are putting your tank at risk, and it is a tremendously important to make sure that you dip those corals to give your tank the best shot that it has at being protected from introducing some type of pest to your reef tank. And that's why not dipping your corals is the number one way that you can set your money on fire with your reef tank. All right, folks, that's going to do it for the top 10 ways you can waste money with your reef tank. I want to thank you for joining me. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. If you enjoyed this one, make sure you hit the thumbs up, and I'll see you next time right here with a brand new video. Yeah.